this virus, this coronavirus too, is not more than a severe cough. And it's, it's in, totally implausible that it's passing from human to human by human, healthy humans coughing. That's not how it happens. It's far more plausible that it's been injected. And yes, essentially every vaccine carrying human uh, animal cells, um, Pediorex with, with Vera monkey kidney cells, we give that to infants. Um, the flu vaccine in bird avian cells carry coronaviruses and, and many other viruses, including retroviruses like HIV. The um, new flu vaccine in, in Italy had four different influenzas, including H1N1, and it was grown in maiden Darby kidney cells, which are dog cells. Dogs carry coronaviruses. Cats have infectious transmissible coronaviruses and get diseases of them. So um, uh, this virus didn't spread to 110 countries from a seafood market in, in, in China starting December, whatever they told us, of 2019. It's plausible, it's probable that it's been in every flu vaccine since 13 to 15, as that's when this work was being illegally done. We, we have no idea, but the flu vaccines are driving the infection, and the, it's, this is injection, and, and I, I, I object very much to the mask because if you are carrying these injected viruses and you wear a mask and you allow yourself to be under that stress and that fear that they've driven to us and then you activate these viruses with things like the stress of not having a job, you know, these dormant viruses will wake up in yourself and you are actually reinfecting yourself over and over with a mask. You're not making somebody else sick. You're making yourself sick. And, and I, and especially those with asthma, those with COPD, those living in pollution, you know, this, there, there are a lot of cofactors to disease development, but wearing a mask will kill more people than <laughs> this virus is not coughed through the air from healthy people who are almost certainly immune as they've almost certainly been infected over the last four Dr. or five Andy years. Dr. Andy Bukacek is a board certified internal medicine physician and sole proprietor of her medical practice in Kalispell named Hosanna Healthcare. She's been practicing medicine for over 30 years, most of those years in Montana. She got her medical degree, degree from the University of Illinois in Chicago, did her internship and residency of internal medicine at Oregon Health Sciences. Thank you, University. and thank you for the introduction. At a time where telling the truth is considered a threat to national security, we're very blessed to have a pastor who tells us the truth. We are blessed beyond measure. So I'm going to read this so that I make sure I don't ex give excessive commentary. So I'm going to talk about death certificates today. The decision for unprecedented government mandated lockdowns has been based on the alleged death rate of COVID-19. Is this death rate based on truth? Inquiring minds want to know, are the reported deaths from COVID-19 truly deaths from COVID-19? To address this question, we need to discuss death certificates since death certificates are the basic source of information about mortality. The discussion of death certificates is not a fun one. We have all grieved so many losses in our lifetimes. Still, we need to talk about it because they are the basis of the so-called death rate of COVID-19. History changing decisions are being made due to these figures, despite the fact that they are flat out wrong. They are flat out wrong, based on data that is insufficient and often inaccurate. Few people know how much individual power and leeway is given to the physician, coroner, or medical examiner signing the death certificate. How do I know this? I've been filling out death certificates for over 30 years. More often than we want to admit, 
We don't know with certainty the cause of death when we fill out death certificates. When it comes to COVID-19, there is the additional data skewer that is, get this, there is no universal definition of COVID-19 death. The Center for Disease Control updated from yesterday, April 4th, still states that mortality, quote unquote, data includes both confirmed and presumptive positive cases of COVID-19. That's from their website. Translation, the CDC counts both true COVID-19 cases and speculative guesses of COVID-19 the same. They call it death by COVID-19. They automatically overestimate the real death numbers by their own admission. The analysis that follows requires the presupposition that in today's medical climate, many, if not most, patients sick enough to be hospitalized will be checked for COVID-19. It also requires an understanding of what we know at this point, that most people who test positive for COVID-19 have mild or no symptoms. Therefore, testing positive for COVID-19 does not mean a person is sick with it, or if the person died, that they died from it. To drive this home, we need to understand how the CDC and National Vital Statistics System are instructing physicians to fill out death certificates related to COVID-19. Brace yourselves and please pay attention and let what I'm about to tell you sink in. The assumption of COVID-19 death can be made even without testing. Based on assumption alone, the death can be reported to the public as an another COVID-19 casualty. The March 24th, 2020 National Vital Statistics System memo states, and I quote, the rules for coding and selection of the underlying cause of death are expected to result in COVID-19 being the underlying cause more often than I not. I hope I was able to make my point. The real number of COVID-19 deaths are not what most people are told and what they then think. How many people have actually died from COVID-19 is anyone's guess. Again, God only knows. But based on how death certificates are being filled out, you can be certain the number is substantially lower than what we are being told. You can be certain the number is substantially lower than what we are being told. Based on inaccurate, incomplete data, people are being terrorized by fear mongers into relinquishing cherished freedoms. Thank you. If someone dies with COVID-19, we are counting that as a COVID-19 death. Saying? Something along the line, figures don't lie, but liars sure can figure. Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Andy Kaufman. Um, I've been uh, talking a lot lately about this uh, viral pandemic, and um, I've learned some things lately that have helped me uh, develop a, a theory, and I think I know what is really going on here, so I want to give that information to everyone. Um, I want everyone to know that I, I am a qualified uh, medical doctor, um, so I put up some information about my background here. Um, I'm board certified. I practice in psychiatry and forensic psychiatry. Um, I also do natural healing consultation. Um, in the past, I've worked in hematology and oncology. I've held leadership positions in uh, medical school. I ran a uh, medical device startup company. Um, and you can see where I had my education. So I feel that I am uh, qualified to talk about this subject matter. And I hope you'll agree. 99% yep. of those who died from virus had other illnesses, Italy say. The doctor sent me this link. Speak on it, man. Yeah, so um, if you could scroll down to the pie chart, um, I think this is uh, this is really telling. So, uh, and I, also I want to say that this this publication follows up an editorial where the uh, president of the Italian equivalent of the National Institutes of Health, I think his name is Silvio Brusaferro, he was interviewed in one of the Italian newspapers. This is covered on John Rappaport's blog, uh, which is where I found it, and he. And this was a week ago, okay, but he came out and said that only two, like one, two deaths in Italy were directly attributable to the virus, and that all the other cases were in people that were essentially severely ill. And when I say severely ill, I mean that they have their, their older people mostly, 
They have uh, one, two, maybe even three serious illnesses. And just a common cold could easily put them over the edge. Certainly, the, the, most of the flu deaths that we see every year are, are in people just like that, where they're very vulnerable. They, uh, I bet a lot of them have lung disease. They didn't give that specific information here. But you could see on this pie chart that the little sliver at the top uh, that you could barely see that says 0.8, that's the number of people that were not ill who died from COVID-19. Um, on the right side, the big black uh, section that is uh, just, just under 50%, those people had three or more chronic illnesses. So this is like someone with heart failure, COPD, and, and kidney insufficiency, right? So they're, they're, they're very, very um, vulnerable and uh, weak people in terms of their health. Uh, the other two sections were either two or one illnesses and they were split, split evenly about 25%. So you can see that really this is an insult that people who are already very ill may succumb to, but healthy people are gonna be just fine. Same as, same as with the flu, pretty much. So here on the left, uh, this is an electron uh, micrograph or a picture from an electron microscope of exosomes and you can see here an exosome budding out of the cell and it's essentially a, a spherical or circular this is a cross section so this is like a, a slice of the tissue um, where on the on the periphery there are like these kind of globular densities or little little dots or circles right and inside the cell here where it says mvp mvb sorry these are the same as mves uh, that's where all these exosomes are when they're inside the cell before they bud out Okay, and now we have a picture on the right, which allegedly shows this COVID-19 virus. And you can see that there are these vesicles budding out of the cell in a circular shape with these globular uh, dots on the periphery. So essentially it's the same thing. Now you might think that this looks a little bit fuzzier on the exosomes and it looks a bit sharper in this picture. And I wanna tell you that the reason for that is because when you're cutting these thin sections of tissue to make these slides, you're using this device called a microtome. It's like a vibrating razor blade. And it's technically difficult. And sometimes the tissue doesn't cooperate well, or sometimes the person is less skilled. And you might not have a perfect slice. On this COVID-19 slide, this is, uh, I've not seen a better slice than this. It's absolutely perfect. The one on the left is a little bit thicker. And so that's why it looks a bit fuzzier and less sharp, but essentially you're seeing the same exact thing. Have you seen this as of yet? This is from the gov.uk. And I'd love your opinion on the high consequence infectious diseases where they are as of yesterday, oh, no, I'm sorry, as of March 19th, 2020, they're claiming COVID-19 is no longer considered to be a high consequence infectious disease in the UK as of March 19th, 2020. Well, Am I reading this wrong? No, uh, I think it's about time that there's uh, some honest assessment to this because the number of people that are dying is not really raise any flags. It's a, a blip on the radar compared to a normal flu season. So that's, that's the most honest governmental report I've seen other than uh, from Italy. Right, and that's, that's the other thing. And now for people that don't know about this document, I'm gonna put this up here one more time. I just did a video maybe an hour ago, several people have covered this, but the original link to this document, I suggest you save this on an external hard drive. Here it is, but we're gonna move on to this next thing that I find well, incredible. If Incredibly I could interrupt strange. you for a second. Have at it. Yeah, Have at it. sorry. I just want to mention because, you know, uh, I still practice some conventional medicine, although I do it in a, a bit of a unique way, but I'm around other doctors. I know other doctors. And all, all the doctors that I know personally that I've uh, interacted with, are they're not afraid of getting sick. They're not afraid of, uh, you know, tons of dead bodies around them at all. They, they realize that it, this is way blown out of proportion just because they can feel it. They, they're not seeing it in front of their eyes. They're not seeing it in front of their eyes. Back in 2015, you gave a TED talk that was unfortunately pretty prophetic. 
You said that uh, it was not missiles, but microbes that we had to worry about. You said the world community wasn't prepared for another pandemic like we've seen, we saw back in 1918 with the Spanish flu. When did you first start to think that COVID-19 might be the epidemic that you'd been worried about? Well, any time you get a human-to-human -human transmissible respiratory virus, uh, it could be the one. And so you're always watching whether it's a variant of the flu or any other respiratory virus, uh, because once it's transmissible at a certain level, because of all the travel we do, it's likely to go completely global. And then the only thing that can help you out is if it's not very fatal. But here with coronavirus, uh, it's quite fatal. Uh what is that old saying? Something along the line, figures don't lie, but liars sure can figure. With no medical background, Bill Gates then went on to become the world's foremost pusher of vaccines and population control. Do you think this is all coincidence? The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation funds the WHO, the NIH, the CDC, and the UN. And now he is saying that until we get mass vaccinations, we might never be able to gather in groups. And which activities like mass gatherings uh, may be in a certain sense more optional. And so until you're widely vaccinated, those may not uh, come back uh, at all. The president's coronavirus response team are all pushing the Bill Gates vaccination agenda. The president's coronavirus response team are all pushing the Bill Gates vaccination agenda. Dr. Fauci is on the leadership council for the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. In January of 2017, Anthony Fauci told a crowd at Georgetown University that there would be a surprise outbreak during the Trump presidency. There is no question that there will be a challenge to the coming administration in the arena of infectious diseases, both chronic infectious diseases in the sense of already ongoing disease, and we have certainly a large burden of that, but also there will be a surprise outbreak. But also there will be a surprise outbreak. But also there will be a surprise outbreak. Deborah Burks is a board member for the Global Fund to Fight AIDS, Tuberculosis, and Malaria, which was founded by the Gates Foundation and known for millions of dollars of fraudulent misuse of funds. In October of 2019, Bill Gates sponsored Event 201, a simulation that estimated 65 million people killed by coronavirus. A simulation that estimated 65 million people killed by coronavirus. In November of 2019, the Peerbright Institute, funded by Bill Gates, was granted European patent number EP317-2319B1 for a coronavirus vaccine that may be used to treat humans. Today, Dr. Fauci says the virus will keep coming back, and he says the ultimate game changer will be a new vaccine. Don't lie, but liars sure can figure. According to Professor Walter Ricciardi, is the scientific advisor to Italy's Minister of Health, this is what he said. He said, the way in which we code deaths in our country is very generous in the sense that all people who die in hospitals with the coronavirus are deemed to be dying of the coronavirus. On re-evaluation by the National Institute of Health, only 12% of death certificates have shown a direct causality from coronavirus, while 88% of patients who have died have at least one pre-morbidity. Many had two or three. My next guest is a doctor and state senator in Minnesota who is deeply troubled by the CDC's latest guidance for counting COVID deaths. Dr. Scott Jensen joins me now. Uh, doctor, I want to read for our viewers what the CDC says in part about how to count COVID deaths r relating to that last issue we just raised. In cases where a definite diagnosis of COVID cannot be made, but is suspected or likely, like the circumstances are compelling with a reasonable degree of certainty, it is acceptable to report COVID-19 on a death certificate as probable or presumed. So doctor, what's the problem with that? Well, in short, it's ridiculous. I spent some time earlier today just going through the CDC's manual on how to complete death certificates and part, the parts that were specifically written for physicians. And in that 
manual that talks of precision and specificity, and that's what we were trained with. The determination of the cause of death is a big deal. It has impact on estate planning. It has impact on future generations. And the idea that we're going to allow people to massage and sort of game the numbers is a real issue because we're going to undermine the trust. And right now, as we see politicians doing things that aren't necessarily motivated on fact and science, the public's going to, their trust in politicians is already wearing thin. And doctor, in that same CDC guidance sheet on COVID-19, it references the fact that basically this is a judgment call for doctors on how to fit, you know, I read it, how to, what goes on line one and then what goes on line two and what goes on the final line as far as contributory, uh, contributing factors and, and ultimate cause of death. But they concede that it is a judgment call. It, again, why is that not correct? Well, let's just take influenza. If I have a patient died uh, a month ago, had fever, cough, and a diet after three days, and maybe have been an elderly, fragile individual, and there happened to be an influenza epidemic around our community, I wouldn't put influenza on the death certificate, and I've never been encouraged to do so. I would put probably uh, respiratory arrest would be the top line, and the underlying cause of disease would be pneumonia, and in the contributing factors, I might well put emphysema or congestive heart failure, but I would never put influenza down as, as the underlying cause of death, and yet that's what we're being asked to do here. Yeah, that's what we're being asked to do here. Dr. Fauci was asked about the COVID death count today. Here's what he said in part. What do you say to those folks who are, who are making the claim without really any evidence that these deaths are being padded, that the number of COVID-19 deaths are being padded? You will always have conspiracy theories when you have uh, very challenging public health crises. They are nothing but distractions. Conspiracy theories, doctor? So you're engaging in conspiracy theories. What do you say to Dr. Fauci tonight? Well, I would remind him that anytime healthcare intersects with dollars, it gets awkward. Right now, Medicare has determined that if you have a COVID-19 admission to the hospital, you'll get paid $13,000. If that COVID-19 patient goes on a ventilator, you get $39,000, three times as much. Nobody can tell me after 35 years in the world of medicine that sometimes those kinds of things impact on what we do. Some physicians really have a bent towards public health and they will put down influenza or whatever because that's their preference. I try to stay very specific, very precise. If I know I've got pneumonia, that's what's going on, the death certificate. I'm not gonna add stuff just because it's convenient. I think that it's not and a it's conspiracy interesting. theory at all. Uh, so you you, reje you reject what he said? Absolutely. Well, it's interesting that in Italy, where it's socialized medicine, I guess they don't have an interest in the, the money, uh, if that's what it is here. And they just went back and they started reclassifying deaths according to their, their top scientific advisor. So they admitted that they were being liberal or generous in how they coded some of these deaths. And, and they're just going back and reclassifying them. Does that surprise you? It really does. I mean, let's just take someone getting hit by a bus and they, they collapse along and they go into the emergency room and they're there for 15, 20 minutes. Blood work comes back, COVID test comes back positive, and they die 20 minutes later because of their collapsed lung. We're going to put that down as COVID-19? That doesn't make any sense. You posted something last week that I reported on uh, your tweet, and it's this is where you said, that the CV fear, the fear mongering by the deep state will go down in history as one of the biggest frauds to manipulate economies, suppress dissent and push mandated medicine. Now, you were tweeting in response to President Trump's claim that Democrats were inflaming the situation, the crisis for political reasons. How did you come to the conclusion that what we're experiencing now is one of the biggest frauds in history? Yeah, so if you look at that tweet, if you can bring it up again, if I can ask you to do that, if you look at that tweet, the three things, it's, it's a very potent tweet, because first of all, you know, I got my PhD in biological engineering at MIT. No, I didn't pay for that. You know, no, you know, it, I got four degrees, in fact, at MIT because of my deep interest, remember, in medicine. And so when you look at this, the tweet is really addressing three things. You have people using fear to manipulate economies 
suppress dissent, which is what the, you know, the hierarchical system, the upper caste used to do, shut up, you know, fall, fall in line, shut the hell up, right? And push mandated medicine because look, the medical system we're moving towards is a top-down system, totally controlled by big pharma, big ag, and big vaccine manufacturers. And, and that's what I was putting up. So it's a very potent tweet because if you look at the uh, sustainable development goals that were put into, you know, signed off by the United Nations and all their countries in 2015, it's called SDG, you know, 2015, SDG three, which was signed in 2015, sustainable development goals. What it says is they paint a utopia, Gary, and you can read it. People should go check it out. You know, no income inequality, support, you know, uh, there's no, uh, in fact, no sexuality anymore. You, you should go read it. It's quite extraordinary. It's this utopia of the elites, okay? And these guys are very clever at creating, spending millions of dollars to create the narratives of helping the quote unquote, the oppressed. And then they will inject them with their pharmaceutical drugs. Forget the fact, and this is, you wanna talk about racism. This is a racism coming from these liberal elites. These indigenous people actually knew how to take care of their health. Okay, the Celts knew how to take care of the health. All of us who came from indigenous cultures, Italians, Indians, we all had our oregano, right, cumin. We knew how to eat food. Food is where we're supposed to get health. But they don't want to believe, they don't want us to believe in our grandmothers, you know, our traditional cultures. They want to believe in this idiot, okay, Bill Gates, who, by the way, never created DOS, okay? He didn't write 50,000 lines of code I did. You know, his mama and papa introduced him to people and he went and bought someone else's DOS and flipped it, okay? But he's a Harvard dropout and he was able to patent his stuff so he gets to be a gazillionaire, you see what I'm saying? Or a Zuckerberg. Mm -hmm. So these guys have built false histories of their eminence in the technology field. They leverage it to say they're gonna be saviors and that savior solution is not food, is not, you know, exercise activities, it's about injections into the bloodstream of people and to control them. That's what they're talking about. And every American needs to wake up that the lawyer lobbyists, the people I'm running against, I'm running against three lawyer lobbyists, I'm the only scientist or an inventor, a guy who works for a living. These lawyer lobbyists are the people who implement the desires of the deep state. That's what's going on. So what we're witnessing right before us should be a wake up call to every person. I don't care if you're Democrat, Republican, Independent. The issue of health goes beyond all those parties. And what you will realize is all of those establishment parties want to hurt you and want to control you and want to make you part. They want to make you a little atomic unit where you become a revenue generator for people like Fauci's clan and these kind of people. Because, and they practice fake science. And no, no academic at MIT, Harvard will say anything. You know why? Because they owe their grant money to people like Fauci because it's a cabal. If you say anything, you're out. That's what happened to Peter. We'll discuss first, okay? the importance of population control. Aristotle advocated the use of abortion and infanticide. In 1798, an essay on the principle of population was written by Thomas Malthus. He outlined the idea of positive checks, which are diseases, wars, disasters, famines, and genocides. Malthus believed that these things should be utilized to increase the death rate and believed that human misery was an absolute necessary consequence. In 1859, Charles Darwin published The Origin of Species. In it, Darwin only hinted at the implications of human populations, but his cousin, Sir Francis Galton, became obsessed with the idea. In 1883, Galton published Inquiries into Human Faculty and its Development, wherein he wrote that his intention is to touch on various topics more or less connected with that of the cultivation of race, or as we might call it, with eugenic. The term comes from the Greek word eugenis, of noble birth. In the early 20th century, eugenics became an academic discipline in universities. Organizations were formed and funded to win public support. The Kaiser Wilhelm Institute and the Cold Spring Harbor Institute rejected the idea that all humans are born equal and began selling the idea 
of cultivating a new master race of noble bloodlines. Planned Parenthood was formed in America by racial eugenics advocate Margaret Sanger. President of IBM, Thomas J. Watson, established a special subsidiary in Poland called Watson Business Machines to assist in the Nazi invasion of Poland. This business continued throughout the war and IBM managed the entire operation from their headquarters in New York. During the Nuremberg trials, the Nazis quoted U.S. Supreme Court Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes in their own defense. They claimed that their eugenics program was being run from the United States. The Nazis were rightly admonished for war crimes, but not Thomas Watson. He went on to create the IBM World Trade Corporation and passed IBM on to his son. His granddaughter ended up marrying Margaret Sanger's grandson. Bill Gates' father worked on the board for Planned Parenthood, and his mother worked on the corporate board for IBM, who Bill partnered with to create Microsoft. Nobody is saying that they're not people that are sick, but the people that are sick were already sick, and this is taking effect on those people, the people that are young, and they're saying, well, why is it affecting young people? What about these young people that have gotten this? What about some of these young people that have gotten sick? Look at their vaccine history. How many of these people have already had vaccines? These are known poisons. These are known poisons. These are known poisons. They have known neurotoxic substances, immunosuppressive substances, uh, adjuvant components, DNA addicts, uh, mutated human cell lines, DNA from other species, all DNA from other species, all, all sorts of garbage. Look at it. This is public information. This is not something that's hidden. And there are many people that have been talking about this for, for years and years. Right now, by crippling the society, by crippling the economy, the world economy, by making people become dependent on the state for food and water and sustenance, that's another way to control you so you do not come running to your savior so you can get food, so you can get shelter. And then, yes, go ahead and stick me with this. Uh, microchip so that I can get my food and my water and if I don't get my microchip then I'm going to be restricted from getting food from being able to travel and so out of default we stick our hand out there so they can stick this RF chip in and give us more toxins and make us more susceptible. Yes there are nine governors cur currently that have not locked down their states and, and refused to do so and kudos to them and to their constituents. I do know that in South Dakota, in Idaho, in North Dakota, and there are a number of other states, the people that have been interviewed have said that they're not worried about the coronavirus and if it comes and affects them, then so be it, but they're not gonna allow it to dictate how they live. And that is exactly, exactly how we should all be. Um, this, all, this whole thing about social responsibility and, and social distancing, it's all social peer created by misinformation and people not really understanding how this all how this whole thing works okay it's just it's just all misinformation and propaganda the media's censorship the media's constant lack of into uh, of integrity and reporting things that are not true should give you enough of an index of suspicion to question where what's happening right now all right when you've got 2,000 papers and studies that have been done showing the immunosuppressive nature of 5G. And again, remember guys, we haven't even had 5G roll out yet to that extent. It's Wherever it is, it's a limited extent. It hasn't rolled out to the same level that it's supposed to be rolled out at the 30 to 300 gigahertz. It hasn't happened. It has happened in some places. So some people have said, me, said to me, well, this affected Iran, there was no 5G there. It affected Italy and there was no 5G there. You are wrong, 5G rolled out, watch part four. It is completely shown what happened when they launched this stuff. The websites that talked about it, they, the, these countries, Italy and Iran and Wuhan specifically in China was targeted as the launch place, was actually given the launch place for China to launch 5G. And in December is when they turned on a few thousand of the 12,000, 13,000 5G towers now, of course, my freedom of speech that. has been censored already by YouTube and by Facebook and, and many other, other people's freedom of speech has been censored for inappropriate content. I'm not sure what's so inappropriate about telling the truth or showing the studies, those studies that are being taken down. I'm not sure what's inappropriate about it, but okay, that's what they want to label it. But it's your right, and I, I have fought, and many people have fought and died for your right to form your opinion and to act upon the will that you have that are listening to this that believe 
what I'm saying and other people that don't believe and it's your right to believe it or not to believe it. It's your obligation to go and research it, find the truth yourself, look with your own eyes, use your own brains. That's all what I'm asking you to do. But to then say, no, this is wrong and it should be censored, that's not what we fought for in World War I. I want you to be one aware II. that the cycle is going to continue and it's going to keep on getting worse unless we do something about it. That's the last thing that we've got. Because it, once, they, once they start to show that we've been vaccinated, at that point, it's going to go corrupt. If you are law enforcement, active duty military, I want you to remember that if you take off your uniform, you're going to be no different than the rest of us, right? You can't appeal to them because remember that it is illegal to follow a illegal order. It is wrong to follow an illegal order. It is considered illegal to follow a corrupted order so keep that in mind i don't know how many people heard about the maine sheriff the sheriff in the state of maine who basically went against the governor who said that anybody who's on the roads because they've locked down maine anybody that's going to be on the roads will be punished by the police and he put out he said we are not living in nazi germany we are not going to stop people randomly just because they're on the roads we're not going to be asking for people for paper because we are still in the united states and that was an incredible stance that this sheriff took because this isn't going to selectively affect a certain ethnicity in the United States or a certain religious group in the United States or a certain um, skin color in the United States. It's affecting everyone, whether you're black or white, whether you're Hispanic or of uh, Asian descent, whether you're Muslim or Christian or Jew. It doesn't matter whether you're rich or poor. It's going to affect everybody. So remember, if you're law enforcement or you're military, and you're asked to do something that is not right in your heart, you know. Uh, there have been suggestions, uh, like you know, some people have said you should take off your uniform and leave. No, don't take off your uniform. You need to keep your uniform on and understand and remember that if your uniform wasn't on, then you would be treated like everybody else. So it's your obligation to protect the U.S. Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Remember that the people that you're going to be coming against, that you're going to be ordered to against, are going to be the citizens of the United States, which you took an oath to protect, all right? These draconian things coming down, it's not what we're about. And it's under this false issue that we are, we are dealing with an epidemic, a pandemic. We, mankind has dealt with pandemics throughout history. And there's nothing that's justified this, especially when you look at the real facts and you start looking at the real science, there's nothing to justify this. So do not be paralyzed by fear. Awaken, available to get this message out to you guys but getting from a different pass it on country is an enemy that lives right here that's creating this and it's right underneath your noses and you don't even see it. So please wake up and smell the roses, realize what's happening, recognize what's happening. Don't be, don't have your head stuck in the sand and think that no, no, that's not possible. There's no way. Ask the questions. Why is this happening? What justification is there to shut down the economy? President Trump said we should be back to work. That's what I'm doing and that's, I mean, we're, we're busier than we've been and i've seen other companies that are still doing everything they're doing and people saying well if i'm going to get sick so so be it there are people in other countries that said if i'm going to get the coronavirus and die fine but i want to be able to right now feed my kids and feed my family i'm not worried about the coronavirus i'm worried about these other realistic things and that's exactly what you should be asking yourself so pass this information on pay it forward i am not condoning violence i'm not condoning any acts like that that's not what i'm saying there are people that are toppling 5G towers in the UK and people were talking to me about that. And I said, that is not the answer. You can't topple these things fast prices and realizes what's, what's important and what they need to be aware of. So please get this information out. If you don't agree with me, I, I respect your opinions. And if you want to go get the vaccines when they come out, God be with you. But also there will be a surprise outbreak.